I apologize for this video. Uh, there's really no good way to record the activity on a console. So I just got the camera out and we'll record it. And I'll try to explain it the best I can because the video might not be so great. So uh, now we have our USB flash drive with the Ubuntu install that we installed on it in the first video. We've got it plugged into our server port and we're just going to go ahead and power the box on. Now some boxes you'll have to select what boot device to pull from to get it to pull from that USB. It's either F2, delete, F12. This one is F2 so I'm just going to hold F2 down. And on this box it automatically selects what drive uh, the next drive in line that has bootable media and USB has been set up in the BIOS. So most of the time you'll have to hit F12 and then select uh, the drive that you want to boot from. It might be under hard drives, it might be under USB devices, something like that. But you'll find it in there, boot from USB, and it'll bring up the Ubuntu installer. Uh, some people do this second option, this multiple server install with MAS. Uh, I prefer not to, I prefer just to do the MAS install by myself because there's a lot of tweaks and stuff that we, we need to do as well. So just in the top one, install Ubuntu server, hit enter. All right, the next screen you'll come up to is what language you want to install. We're just going to do English. And the next one is location, United States. Uh, don't detect the keyboard layout. It does some funny things. Just hit no. And select the keyboard out you want. Uh, English, US is for me. Uh, same, keyboard layout, US, English. Now we're going to detect the network hardware. Uh, this box has two interfaces in it. ETH1 and or ETH0 and ETH1. One is collect, connected to a router that's connected to the internet, and the other one will be connected to the MAS cluster, the private network. Um, ETH0 is connected to the internet, so we're going to use that as our primary source so it can get out and, and download the packages it needs. We'll talk more about ETH1 later. So ETH0. I'm going to detect DHCP to grab an IP address. We found one, and this host, since this is going to be our MAS host, we're just going to name it MAS, Metal as a Service. We'll go with that. Uh, we are in the United States, so we're going to use the United States Mirror for downloading. Uh, that That's it, the US Archive for Ubuntu, hit enter. We don't need a proxy, we can get straight out. You might need one, but this install will not continue. So this is going to load additional components. This can take a while, so I'll fast forward through this part of the video. Okay, now enter your username, or your name, and then it will try to take that name and make a username. So just use that as your username. Uh, enter your password. Confirm your password. Now I'll complain about you using a weak password. I'm just going to go ahead and use it. Uh, I do not want to encrypt my home directory, so no. Now we're going to get the clock time from the internet. Uh, it's asking me if my uh, time zone is correct. I am in central time, so yes, this is correct. Now it's going to detect the hard disks on this box. Uh, there's three currently three hard drives with the USB drive installed. Uh, it's very important to remember what drive you're installing on because you don't want Grub to overwrite the USB drive as a bootloader. You want it to remain a bootable drive but then as we create the install you want the drive that's in the box to be a bootable drive as well. Uh, there is already an install on this box that's why this message is coming up. It's on dev SDB uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell it, it it's okay to unmount it because we're just going to do a reinstall. So yes, you won't have that if this is a clean install. So I always do, we're going to use the entire disk and set it up with LVM, Logical Volume Manager. 
uh, it's easier to add space or move space around if you set up things with LVM from the beginning. It's just a preference of mine. You can do it any way you want if you know more about it than I do. Uh, we're, we're doing guided with LVM. Uh, and SDB is a SSD drive that I have in here. I've, I've got a Western Digital 160 uh, spinner and then I've got this SSD I put in to, for the install so it boots up a little faster. Uh, and then this is the USB drive we're actually booting from right now for the install. So we want to install on SDB. Remember SDB so that we can tell it where to put the grub bootloader later. So select it. Yes, it's okay to remove existing volume data from the last install I did. And it's going through and cleaning up the partitions and formatting things. Okay, uh, do we want to write the changes to the disk? Yes, it's okay. Uh, do we want to use the whole disk? I always just tell it to use the whole disk. And write the changes because it, it's going to create root swap on the partitions now. Go ahead and we can write them. Now it's going to actually do the partitioning. Okay, now we're installing the base file system. This can take a few minutes, so I'll go ahead and speed through the, the video until we get to the next part that we have to answer some questions. Okay, the next question we come to is uh, how do you want to handle the updates of the, the upgrades of the system? Uh, I always hit no automatic updates. Uh, I'll decide when, uh, you know, when I want to do upgrades. You can do it either way, but it's just easier to manage it yourself. That way you know what's going on. So hit OK. Okay, now it's going to ask you what additional packages you would like to install during the initial installation. Uh, we really don't need anything since this is going to be a MAS server. Uh, I'm just going to install OpenSSH. Just tab down to the ones you want, but I don't even need basic Ubuntu and ser server install. Just do OpenSSH and we can pick later uh, the other packages that we want to install for, for our convenience. So just OpenSSH, hit continue. All right, now we're starting the Grub bootloader install. And this is where I said before, it's important to remember, if you have multiple drives, what drive you're installing on. Now, we are installing on dev SDB, so it, it picked it correctly. We want to install the bootloader on SDB. Sometimes it will select a different drive, and it's easy to wipe out your USB bootable or put it on another drive that you, you know, doesn't have the operating system on that will go ahead and boot. This is right, so just make sure it says at the same drive that we set our install on during the partition. So hit continue. And we, we're going to set all the logs to uh, universal time code to make things easier to sync up. So, yes. Okay, now it's time to remove the USB drive out of the slot and hit continue and it's going to reboot and we should come up uh, with Ubuntu server so the server has rebooted uh, and now we're up to the login prompt so go ahead and enter in your username and password like we did like we used during the install 
and now we're at a command prompt uh, for our mass server. Now, the only thing we really need to know uh, to get us off of this console and away from this video uh, and back to SSH is what IP address DHCP assigned us so that we know where to go with our SSH utility. So I'm just going to do a clear to make it easier for you guys to see. And then do a IF config. dash a and this will show you um, your interfaces now if you remember in the install we used uh, eth0 which is the top one there as our facing uh, interface uh, as our I, uh, internet facing interface that's where we're going to communicate to this server from the network and the eth1 down there hasn't been set yet we'll do that later but that will be our private network interface so it looks like we've got inet address 192.168.1.150 and that's a good IP address to use but now we will know uh, in the next video where to log in at to this server so that we can start configuring mass. So Ubuntu's install is done. Uh, we've gotten the IP address that we need uh, to log in and uh, I'll see you in the next video to to configure mass. Thanks.